So this video is gonna be a little bit long. I gotta look for some shit real quick. Climbers, I'm building my perf report today. While he's checking stuff, showing some shit off. Trying to figure out troubleshooting lubrication maintenance engine four. Da -da, three. Four. Really need to go through these books and record them for everybody to have. Yeah, because it even shows you the torque sequence. Uninstall your apex seals. I don't know if I'm in frame or not. Slide hammer in your fucking shit. Checking for warp, warpness. How to check for warpness. How to check for side step wear. Move down the indicator. This indicated to measure wear by the side seal area. Rotor housing and inspection and repair. Rotor and housing inspection and repair. Same for area housing as in housing. Okay, rotor housing inspection. Before cleaning, check the rotor housing inner edges for coolant residue. Or combustion gas leaks this is may indicate a distorted housing. Carefully clean all the carbon from the inside of the rotor surface. Inside rotor surfaces with rag and solvent. Remove all foreign material from the rotor. Housing coolant passages. A wire brush may be used. If care is taken not to damage the aluminum, examine the inside surface for of each rotor housing. If the chrome is peeling, scored, or otherwise damaged, the housing must re be replaced. Using a micrometer shown, as shown in figure 44, measure the rotor housing thickness. The measure, the measurement should be taken at the four points in located in, in, indicated in figure 45. If the difference between minimum and maximum thickness is more than 0 0.06 millimeters, the rotor housing must be replaced. Standard motor, standard rotor housing thickness is 2.75597 70 millimeters. Now, write down the minimum rotor housing thickness that will be needed for later procedures. Oh. Miraculously turns the same fucking page. Rotor and seal inspection. No, that's not necessarily what I'm looking at, but while I'm putting this out here, might as well spring and seal. Your rotor at three points indicated. Internal ads to repair it. They just tell you to hit it back in. Apex seal. Run down to rotor house. Step five takes a straight difference between rotor housing thickness. 
Um, if the gap is more than specified, replace the rotor. If the gap is less than specified, the internal gear is slipped out and the must be driven in carefully by striking it with a plastic hammer. Recheck step six measurements after you do that. Inside the rotor, the bearing must be replaced with scored, visibly worn, or otherwise defective. Rotor bearing failure is relatively rare and it's usually accompanied by severe engine damage, serious engine damage, whatever. Check rotor bearing clearance, measure bearing diameter with the bore gauge, measure diameter of the sector shaft rotor journal with a micrometer. The difference between these two measurements is bearing clearance, bearing clearance specifications listed in table four. You always clean the apex seals with a solvent. Don't use abrasives or, or scrapers. This will ruin the seals while cleaning. Check the seals for visible wear or damage. Measure the height of the seals at two positions. Place each apex seal in the groove of the rotor. Measure the gap between the rotor. Have a dealer or rotary engine specialist measure the corner seal bores with the Mazda bar gauge. See figure 56. See. Replacing the rotor bearing is a precise procedure that should be left to the dealer or machine shop while the tools are or an acceptable substitute or not developed to obtain it, a mistake could damage the rotor. In addition, if the bearing is not secured properly, it may come loose when the engine is running, causing severe engine damage. They were being really paranoid in that one. They didn't give me what I wanted. Okay, so not a mess of a workshop inside the fucking house both my rotor housings here and I did my first port on there with JB Weld and it took that much respectively yeah. it took that much fucking JB Weld and I did the whole fucking port so kind of a lot for the price of JB Weld JB Weld's fucking $15 for a fucking thing of it and I'm gonna that's just one port so this Super glued in, and you can see it's overlapping underneath like that. Yeah, so this is not going to affect my measurements. So if I lay this on here like that, I should get a measurement because what's happening, as you can tell by the marking here, is there's no chrome flaking, in my opinion, but there's chrome thinning. So gas is passing up underneath here because there's a measurement there. Let's see if I can get this to janky ass camera holder here. So I got my feeler gauge and I've got 0 0.04 millimeter feeler gauge here. And if I stand this up, Kind of like that, it fits up underneath it. See that? It wants to catch up underneath it. It's hard to do with just two hands. So, what I was trying to show these are brand new rotary aviation seals, RA Classics. I got for like $240 off eBay for a whole set of six. And I super glued the corner tips together to put them in for insulation. But since these are new, they should be straight, right? They look straight. I'm not going to question them. But if I put this on here, like so, best I can, hold it down there. Oh, come on. Hold it down like this. Some of it can almost pass up underneath it. Let me go get my other manual here. This is what I'm trying to show. 
So I got an 83 workshop manual. Let me get the right section. Let me get the right section up. I'll show you. I'm just on low power mode, so. So what I'm thinking is, is since these are proof report housings and I bought them two of them for a thousand dollars. I already got my intake, you know, whatnot, lot for the racing beat ones. And they're not in the worst shape, but they got some corrosion here. What I'm thinking is rotor housing, no before cleaning, check the traces, check for traces of gas or water leakage along the inner margin of each side face for a rotor housing. Remove all the carbon, all carbon from inner surface of the rotor housing by wiping with cloth. Soak the soak with cloth. Soak the cloth in a solution of ketone or thinner if it's a, a difficult to remove the carbon. Remove all deposits and rust from cooling water passages on the rotor house on the housing. Remove the seal agent by wiping with cloth or brush sh soaked in solution of ketone or thinner. The rotor apex seal and side seal. Here's here's what I'm trying to say. All right. Come on now. There's one. There we go. So it's saying remove all carbon from apex seal, side piece, and, and side seal, corner seals, soft seals, and each spring. Be careful not to damage the seals and springs. Never use emery paper as it will damage the seals. Wash them with clean solution. Bang. No. Check for stepped wear. Limits on that. Warpage. Stepped wear by side seal. Limit inside of oil seal tracing mark. 1.1 mm, millimeters. Outside is 0.1. Stepped wear by oil seal. And here, move feeler to and fro. Move feeler to and fro. Oil seal tracing mark. And it refers to replace the housing. Front station again, main bearing, not particularly caring about that. Replacing the front main bearing. Remove the station gear and main bearing as assembled using a puller and installer, but you don't really need that. It's a plastic hammer, it'll get you out. But I want you to use the tool, get that out. Is apply a thin layer of coats of do some Vaseline on the O-ring. Rotor housing here. Check the chromium plated surface on the rotor housing for scoring, flaking, or any damage. If any of these conditions are excessive, replace the rotor housing. Check the rotor housing width by using micrometer. The measurement should be taken at four points. Rotor width, spec for that. But these should be these should be for 12 A's if it gives you specific amount of uh, things. This is a 13 B because it's an 83. They never had a 13 B on this generally. Rotor. Okay, so. This is what leads me to believe I can use this. See the apex seal? It says apex seal, side, side piece, and spring. Check the apex seal and side piece for wear, crack, or any damage. If any of these conditions is found, replace the seal. Measure the apex seal height with a micrometer at two positions and replace the height is replace if the height is less than the limit. Apex seal height, standard, 0.85 millimeters, limit 0.7. Check the apex, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Check the apex seal for warpage by measuring the clearance between the top surfaces of the apex seal picked out from the three seals of the rotor. 
If the clearance exceeds the amount, replace all three pick seals on the rotor. So they're talking about the center being bowed up, right? And you have a limit of 0 0.06 millimeters, two, two thousandths of an inch essentially, right? And then it goes on to, you know, gap and wiring out of the rotors, essentially. And then the height of the springs and every, all the tolerances you essentially need, right? But if I can have a, a limit of apex seal warpage of two thousandths of an inch, approximately, according to the actual workshop manual, let's see here. Come on. Then. Of course, as soon as I start doing this, somebody hits my phone up like constant. I ain't got no friends out here, so it's my fucking work. So here's two thousands, right? This is a limit. If it don't go in there, here's two and a half thousand. So this is, I'll take this. I'll take this. Well, that's real close to what they were trying to do. So I'll take this one. Now, I... come on, feeler gauges, man. Sorry about the close-up view of this. Oh, yeah. So, in this one, I got to pull and turn at the same time to get it to rotate, because I got it kind of tight here. 25. Yep, see that. Two and a half thousandths. Babe, can I get some help? Yeah. I need a hand, a literal hand. Not like clapping. Can you hold both points of that as best you can, even? So don't hold, hold at the tip, don't hold don't hold at this tip here, hold back like here. Like push pressure against it. Try your best. You can use two hands and I'll get out your way. Cause what I'm trying to do is take a measurement. I gotcha. But I'm not trying to have that corner seal in there. Here, I'll make it easier on you. I'll break that corner seal off. So now the seal is like this. So that way she can po put it down any way she can. So just measure there. Just hold it down there, watch your fingers. I don't know if you can see that well. Go get that red light real quick, and we'll put some light on this. Be right back. <laughs> 